Welcome to this video on the topic of complex numbers. In this lesson, we're going to have a look at something called polar form. A complex number may be described by its modulus and argument. This form is called polar form. Consider the complex number z is equal to a plus ib. This complex number over here is represented in its Cartesian form, also known as rectangular form. It's defined by having a real component a and an imaginary component b. We can represent this number over here using something called polar form. Polar form represents a number using its modulus and its argument. It's shown as such. We have two components still. We have the imag we have the comp the polar form is shown as such. We still have the real component shown here and the imaginary component here, but we're representing it using cosine and sine and using the modulus and the argument. Now this can be compressed further such that it's simpler on the eyes. So we compress it by going modulus, cis, arg, z. Now, the compression comes from compressing the cosine, the i, and the sine all together in one function here, so it makes it smaller to see. And then we can go one better. better. Rather than writing the modulus and the argument, we can write big R, cis. You don't necessarily have to use R, but we'll use it in this case. So what we have over here is the final representation of polar form. So we have what's seen as r and theta where the domain of theta is between negative pi and pi and the big r is all positive real numbers and so we never have zero for this number over here and we never have a negative it's always positive real numbers now polar form describes a complex number as a vector whereby the vector is going to have a distance and direction. The distance being the big R over here, also known as the magnitude, and the theta represents our direction. So magnitude being the length of our vector, and the direction being whereabouts it's pointing to. Let's have a look at a few examples. Polar representation. What we want to do is we want to convert the following complex numbers into their polar representation or their polar forms. So we've got Cartesian form, let's go to polar. Now this can be done in three steps. The first step is we have z equals 1 minus i. We first want to calculate the modulus of z. 1 squared plus the square of negative 1 and that's going to give us a result of root 2. Next we want to do the argument. The argument of this guy is going to be such that when we imagine our argon diagram, what we're going to expect to see is that because we've got a real or positive real and a negative imaginary, we're going to be pointing downward like this, which implies that our theta is going to equal a negative phi or phi. So in other words, we have to go minus inverse tan of the imaginary over the real just like that and because it's one over one and I remember this I simply know it's going to be negative pi on four so writing this out in its polar form z can be represented as root two cis negative pi on four so that's our first example Alright, next example we have omega. Omega is defined as 4 plus 3i. We're going to convert this to its polar form using the exact same method as before. So first I start off by getting the modulus of omega. This is 4 squared plus 3 squared all square rooted. And as this question shows up on every Pythagoras' or Pythagoras' theorem test, I simply know it's equal to 5. We have the argument of omega. Now Thinking about how this will look on the or as a vector, we've got a positive real, positive imaginary, so our vector is going to point out like this. So our theta is simply equal to our phi, and in turn, that means that it's simply the inverse tangent of 3 over 4. 
Now, I don't know this one off the top of my head, so what I need to do is employ my calculator. So I say up we come, and I simply plug it in. Just like that. And I see that my argument is 0 0.644. So therefore, omega can be represented in polar form as 5 cis 0 0.644. Okay, final one, we have sigma. Sigma is minus one plus two i. Converting this to polar form, exactly like we've done all the previous ones, minus one squared plus two squared which gives us a value of root 5. Next our argument, argument of sigma is going to be, well, let's think about this. Our argon diagram would look like this. Our real component's negative, so we're in this region, and then our imaginary is positive, so we're pointing up like this. Consequently, what we're going to find is that we're going to get pi take our phi, and our phi in this case is always going to be the inverse tangent of, in this case, two over one, or just two. Calculating this. We get an angle of 2.034, so therefore, the polar representation is going to look like root 5 cis 2.034. Done. Now this is a manual way in which we can do the calculations. I'm going to now show you how you can do this fast on your calculators. So we say up we come and then look at the let's look at the first one over here. To do this using our calculators quick, we can go options, complex, and then F6 to move across to this menu here. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to plug it in in its Cartesian form or rectangular. So we go one minus I. Next, we turn our attention to F3 over here. This is the polar form. Well, this form over here, it's called phasor form, but it's basically the same as polar form. The only difference is we represent cis as an angle over here. This form's typically used in electrical engineering, but for us, we're going to continue using this cis notation here. We click execute, and lo and behold, it does the conversion automatically for us. Next one across for omega. I key it in, and lo and behold, it's as we expected. And to finish this off, I request polar form. And as you can see, it does the conversion with ease. Now, whenever you're doing a test and you have access to a calculator, it's highly advisable that you use the calculator to do the conversions here. Moving on. Cartesian form, also known as rectangular, is a practical form for complex addition and subtraction. Polar form is practical form multiplication and division. Now looking at why this is the case, we turn our attention to some quick hand rules we can use when we're doing multiplication and division in polar form. What you'll see is for multiplication, to carry out multiplication, all we do is we multiply the coefficients in front of cis, so a and b, and we add the angles inside of the cis arguments here. So theta and phi simply get added together. So multiplication's a breeze when we're doing it this way. Similarly for division, we divide the coefficient, so a divided by b, and then we simply subtract theta from phi. So this makes multiplication way easier with complex numbers when we're in polar form. Now let's have a look at the application of this. Suppose we have two examples here, so two expressions, and what we want to do is we want to simplify these. For a, we have root 5 cis pi over 3 times root cis negative pi over 4. Let us compute these and represent the final answer in polar form. Now putting this together, what we can do is we grab our coefficients, 
root 5 and 3 and I'll just write them as 3 root 5. So that's nice and easy. Next, I get the theta and the phi and I go 3 over 3 under pi and that's going to be uh, plus negative pi over 4. Now doing this calculation here, I can simply go pi over 3 plus negative pi over 4 gives me a value of pi over 12. So therefore the simplified version of this is going to be 3 root 5 cis pi over 12. So nice and simple. Next one, B, we have 4 cis pi over 2 times root 3 cis pi over 6 all divided by root 2 cis pi. Simplifying this out, I'm simply going to write it as 4 root 3 over root 2 multiplied by cis pi on 2 plus pi on 6 take pi because pi down here is division. Simplifying this one further, what we find is that we get 4 root 3 over root 2 is going to be 2 root 2 root 3 and I don't like having the root 2 and the 3 like this so I can simplify that down to 2 root 6. Cis and then let's crunch this one in our calculators. So pi on 2 plus pi on 6 minus pi is equal to negative pi on 3. So therefore we have simplified expressions A and B. Now having a look at how we can do this on our calculators, we say up we come. And first expression, let's have a look at how we can put this in. We can go by starting off as root 5 and then we have to think how we get the cis. Now if you notice when we're doing the conversion here to polar form we can request this angle here. All we do is we go shift and then we've got the angle over here. Next in brackets we throw in the argument so pi over 3. Then we're going times 3 angle negative negative pi over 4. I hit execute and it gives it to me in rectangular form. Now the question explicitly stated we want polar form so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it back, we'll hit execute, then we're going to go shift, answer and we'll just request it, change it to polar form and lo and behold as you can see it does the conversion for us nice and simple. Second example over here, let's have a go again except we'll do it all in one line. So putting this together. I can go execute and of course it's going to give it to me in my Cartesian form or I can go polar in one go by using this operator here and lo and behold it gives me my answer as expected over here. Alright, final question. We have 1 plus i minus root 2 cis uh, minus pi on 4. So what we're dealing with here is we've got our polar form shown over here and we've got our rectangular shown over here. Well, let's call it Cartesian form. And of course this symbol over here, it's not negative rather it's minus otherwise this wouldn't be in polar form. What we're going to do is we're going to use technology in this case to help us simplify the process here. Now the way in which we can do this is we can do it in piecework. Now the simplification process on this one is going to be better if we do, if we convert both of these expressions into their Cartesian form. The reason for this is that 
Polar form is really efficient when we're doing multiplication and division. However, a Cartesian form is more practical when we're doing addition and subtraction because we simply add and subtract the real and the imaginary components. So what we're going to do is we'll use our tech to convert this into a Cartesian form. Now to start off with, I'm simply going to go in brackets, root 2, my angle of pi on 4. And then I'm going to ask it to output this as rectangular form, just like that. So I can see it's 1 minus i. Now looking at this, I can easily do this in my head. In this case, the ones are going to cancel. So therefore, what I'm left with is simply 2i. And 2i can be rewritten as, I'll simply go 2, shift, i. I want this in polar form. And as you can see, it's going to be 2 root, and then we get a half pi. So in summary, what we had a look at in this video was firstly, we had a look at the definition of polar form, that being r cis theta. Then we had a look at how we could do conversions from Cartesian form into polar form. And then finally, we had a look at where it's practical to work in our Cartesian form and where it's practical to work in our polar form. Cartesian form when we're doing addition and subtraction and polar form when we're doing multiplication and division.